So next we're gonna go ahead and take a look at your maternal great-grandfather, Frank E. Fisher. And this one starts on your mother's side. Goes to her father, Alfred Fisher. To his father, Frank Fisher. And then we get to Frank's Azave Fisher, who is actually born Francois Zavi Le Boissonnier to Francois Zavi Le Boissonnier and Henriette Francoeur in 1868. The family lived in Port Fairfield and Grand Island, Maine, and in St. Leonard, New Brunswick, among other places. And I noticed you did have a number of the ancestors in Grand Isle, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where my grandmother was uh, was raised. She actually spoke uh, French until she was about six, and then she learned English. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a really nice way to do it. Yeah. Now, he married twice, first in 1892 in Fort Fairfield, Maine, to Marie Helen Nelly Poitras. They were the parents of four children, including premature twins who died within a day, Pearl Agnes and Alfred Joseph. But mm -hmm. what we did find interesting was that he was a dealer in horses, carriages, and sleighs in Fort Fairfield and in Grand Isle. Slaves, did you say, or sleighs? Sleighs, sorry. Oh, okay, big difference. <laughs> Yeah. We're not dealing. Yeah. We're, we're not dealing with yeah, enslaved the, people. No. Right. Right. <laughs> he also owned a hotel in Grand Island, and this was really fun. It was called the Frank E. Fisher Boarding House and Restaurant. He owned it from 1908 to 1912, and there's a picture actually taken um, around that time period. This is one of the photographs featured on MainMemory.net. Now it was taken in 1905 when Frank would have been a carriage dealer there. You know, I don't know about you, but I just love seeing the clothing of the era mm -hmm. and, you know, the horses and carriages on the unpaved main street, all the stuff Gosh. that was the norm back then. Yeah. Such a trip. And here you can see that Frank was also a deputy sheriff for some time in Grand Isle. Now, he seemed to have been kind of a jack of all trades and very involved in the community. Starting on your mother's side again, we go to Aline Morneau, your grandmother, her mother, and then to Aline's father, Charles Jean Morneau, mm -hmm. and finally to Charles, his father, and your great grandfather. This is another one of the remaining buildings in Grand Isle. They preserve that and they preserve several homes from the original community. But the house we're going to look at is the Morneau House. This one was built back in 1857. The Morneau House is believed to have been built in 1857 by Charles Morneau, your second great grandfather and a French Canadian immigrant. He settled in the Grand Isle, Maine area in 1856 and the next year married Flavie Thibodeau, your second great grandmother. Charles was a merchant trader and provided space for a post office in his home when members of his family served as postmaster. In 1973, the house was donated to Our Living Heritage by Norman Bupre and her husband, Addie. She is Charles's great granddaughter and your second cousin. In 1975, the house was moved to the Acadian village where it still stands to this day. So if you ever want someone to visit, <laughs> Yeah, that's on my bucket list of, of places to, to go to. I've never been to Maine. Ooh, see, now that would be great. You could go yeah. walk in the house. I act like a big shot. Uh, excuse in. me, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I belong is, here. I belong here. Back up. <laughs> I want to talk to you about another second great grandfather, Alexis Sear. And here we travel on your mother's line again to her mother, Elaine to Aline's mother, Suzanne, and finally to Suzanne's father, which is your second great-grandfather, Alexis Sear. Now, Alexis was born on the 7th of December, 1836, in St. Basile, Madawaska, New Brunswick, the son of Paul Sear, and I'm not sure how you say that, Salome Thibodeau. He was first listed in a census record in 1850, at that time, his family was living on the Van Buren Plantation in New Brunswick. His father, Paul, was working as a farmer and owned $4,000 of real estate. Three of his brothers worked as laborers. Eight of, the, of his nine siblings, including the three worked at, that worked, attended school. So here we see that his father was born in Maine and his mother was born in New Brunswick. 
His sister Eleanor died the following year at the age 11. Three years later, his brother Remy died, age 27. And Alexis and Philomene had four children between them, one son and three daughters. Nine months after Christine was born, Philomene died. And so here's, you know, Alexis with these four children. Now, several years before his death, Alexis represented his district in the state legislature. He was later said to be one of the principal citizens of Aroostook. He died in 1887 and he was buried there. And, you know, once again, you just had so many interesting people in Grand Isle. It was just so fun to go through yeah, there. Crazy. I, I can't believe the amount of research that uh, you guys did. It's so in-depth. 